It's no secret Americans who supported the presidency of Donald Trump mystify those known as the liberal media elite. Still, many Americans gasped when a trusted news voice millions used to wake up to made this statement. The question is, how are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? For many citizens, it was jaw-dropping to hear something so radical from a respected journalist. What did you think when you heard her calling for Trump supporters to be deprogrammed? You kind of get that sinking feeling in your stomach because it's so disappointing. You're like, oh, wow, seriously? It's a year since Fox Nation last visited the border. Longtime journalist and former 60 Minutes correspondent Lara Logan, who now hosts her own show on Fox Nation, Lara Logan has no agenda, says this so-called idea is more widely accepted than you might think. Just the idea that anyone needs to be deprogrammed is such a radical idea. And yet, it is. this is not an idea that you're hearing on the fringes, right? This is an idea that's being published in the opinion pages of the Washington Post. She's right. This comes from Post opinion writer Brian Klass. So do we have any hope of deprogramming the millions of Americans who are devoted to dangerous lunacy? Don't hold your breath. One in a slew of articles and commentary that accept deprogramming as a necessary response to Americans disappointed by the presidential election. There are millions of Americans, um, almost all white, almost all Republicans, who somehow need to be deprogrammed. They're, it, it, it's as if they, don't, they, they, they are members of a cult, the Trumpist cult. Logan points out she's not motivated by politics or party, rather outrage over the media's self-sustaining sinister narrative that in some cases threatens the very lives and livelihoods of millions of citizens. There is an entire infrastructure that is built around sustaining this narrative and targeting millions of people in this country who see the world differently and who they regard as a threat and now as illegitimate enough to have to be erased. Hunter Biden's laptop was a conspiracy theory until it wasn't. And Russia collusion was never ever uh, cast as a conspiracy theory, but it wasn't true. And how damaging was that? What about the fact that Stephen Scalise was shot by a Bernie Sanders supporter? What is it that Bernie Sanders supporters uh, believed that justified picking up a weapon and going and trying to kill someone? I mean, that's much more than sinister. That's much more than uh, just media bias. There are actual political operatives who um, are being paid and who have placement and access throughout the media who are making sure that these narratives are sustained. What is this? Is this just about Donald Trump or is this just about conservatism? What do you think? This was never about Donald Trump. And that's what made Donald Trump so threatening to all the people that really, really, really went out of their way to destroy him and to get rid of him. It was all about focusing everybody on the man so that you wouldn't remember to focus on the principles, so that you wouldn't realize that what actually happened for the first time in living memory is that we, the people, as it is in the Constitution, actually said, okay, we're gonna exercise our rights. We've had it, we're done. We're done with you saying things can only be done this way in Washington. We're done with you taking our tax dollars and then telling us that you know best we're done with paying for NATO and then being uh, disregarded and criticized and blamed for everything by the international community. Fine, we won't, we won't pay your defense bills then. We don't understand why you agreed to this trade deal with China that destroyed manufacturing in this country. We don't understand why uh, you still are part of the United Nations when everyone at the UN says that um, America's you know, to blame for everything and what what the propaganda was all about, what the targeting of Donald Trump and the emphasizing of you know, every annoying thing about him that got emphasized over and over and over and over again, was shaming you into not voting for him or admitting that you vote for him and, um, and distracting you from the real principles at stake so that, that he would be limited in what he'd be able to achieve and that he could quickly 
be gotten rid of as fast as possible. And how do you know that's true? Because you don't have to take my word for it. What do I know? I'm just a journalist. Well, you know it's true because look what happened even before he left office. The target shifted. It went from Donald Trump to you. It's a chilling assessment. One Logan says is being backed up with action. Just look at the Department of Homeland Security's new domestic terrorism bulletin, warning of ideologically motivated violent extremists here at home. People the former CIA director calls a greater threat than Al Qaeda. This threat from domestic violence extremists is much more challenging, I believe, than it was in terms of going after foreign terrorists. Have we really forgotten what 9-11 was like? That you're treating January 6th like 9-11? And she warns the media might not realize what it's ultimately sacrificing. So right now it's it's reprogramming or deprogramming Trump supporters. What, what about when it's deprogramming Christians of all kinds, including left and right? People think, well, I'm I'm a better person than a Trump supporter, right? Because I believe I've studied critical race theory and I voted for Joe Biden and I would never vote for Donald Trump or a, or a horrible, nasty Republican, right? Except uh, you go to church and God and religion is a threat to progressive secular movement in this country. And uh, now you need to be deprogrammed. And who's next? Who else is on the list? For Logan, who's a native of South Africa, that's a question she tells me she never, ever thought she'd be asking about the United States of America. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News.